we'll get started here in just a couple few minutes. Feel free to ask questions if you got them and just show some uh, pieces here from Awelos in the meantime. Got a lot of stuff to show you guys tonight. What's good, Braden? Now these are uh, found down in Mexico, Flower Child. Uh, these specifically that I'm showing tonight are all from Abuelos de Alisco. Um, a lot of them are found around the El Toro mountain there. I wish I had the skill to make this kind of a mosaic. I don't have the time for sure. <laughs> the amount of effort that went into something like this had to be excruciating. This is actually a base of a much larger piece. It's very fragile. It's all glued together. And it actually holds like, like this guy here, his feet go in. I'm not gonna let go right now, but they do, they all stand up. Everything is just so precisely balanced and cut. And, Nice. Yeah, I've never actually been to a Waylos. Yeah. I would love to go there someday though and check it out. I've met a, a lot of really, really nice people from there. That's what our research project's here to figure out, BK Noob. I, uh, I have a lot of questions. I thought they were all fake at first, but the question pile has grown and the evidence pile has grown. And unfortunately I can't, um, yeah, that, that looks definitely like a mason compass. I, uh, I've seen carbon dates range anywhere from eight to 20,000 years old. They test like, like, for instance, on this piece here, you can see the glue. So they'll, they'll scrape that glue, which has organic material in it. And that's how they get the carbon date. It's definitely, uh, the stuff that they talk about probably in the Bible before the Bible was conceived and wrote. Some of the other cultures in the world, like Samaria, Egypt, and stuff, probably stemmed from. I would imagine there's there's a lot of Egyptian um, things, like the the Ankh is really uh, prevalent in a lot of this stuff. It's found in uh, Abuelos de Alisco, Mexico. see like on this the Sumerian influence is astonishing even some type of cuneiform I, I'm not sure I've tried to get this translated but it's easier said than done you can even see the Saturn rings on that one. It's definitely our solar system that's mapped out here. Uh, yeah, they were found um, a lot with uh, around the um, El Toro mountain. Found like anywhere from 10 to 30 centimeters in the ground usually. Some have been excavated from caves and little um, like holy type places that are built into some rocks and type things. We've got quite a few uh, videos of different um, digs that the guys down there have sent and they use GPR or, or they look for certain things in the ground and I think this was like a like put a drink or something in there and take a, a shot maybe <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, the, these actually produce an electromagnetic frequency that's pretty unique. And they all produce it one way or another, and, um, and and the way it spikes is what's interesting about it. Like it'll it'll spike up and down um, pretty dramatically, even in a in a Faraday cage or whatnot. So it's it's not outside interference. It's quite interesting. I do have the gold egg. It's right over here, actually. Pretty special piece here. We've uh, we've seen carbon dating and thermoluminescent testing that show um, anywhere from eight to twenty thousand years old. I'm not really selling any of these. I've got some of the smaller parts and stuff like that uh, on our eBay or our website. But as far as this larger stuff that's historically important, I don't really try to uh, try to sell too much of it just because the research is, is not even close to being done yet. So still a lot of questions and I don't want to, you know, leave a, a stone unturned, I guess. <laughs> no, it's not solid gold. It's a type of leafing that's on there. Show you the back of this one. If it'll sit on here. This is one of the few depictions of Isis in a human form that I've seen on any of the pieces. A lot of them are of an alien headed being with the wings like this. So to see it as a human is something of note, I guess. Yeah, Egyptians in Mexico, you know, and that there's a there's a story back that the Smithsonian and, and some newspapers published back in the early 1900s from the Grand Canyon. And, you know, it described Egyptian type pieces and giants and sarcophagus and stuff in the Grand Canyon. They published it and then the Smithsonian withdrew their statements. Uh, the researcher and archaeologist that was in charge of that was uh, the last name of Kincaid. Um, so it's really uh, it's it's a firm possibility that um that there's more to the story at least how did i come upon it well i um i have a my wife she cuts opals and so we collect different you know lightning ridge you know australian opals and i had a buddy go down to the uh the tucson gem show and i told him to you know grab me some opals i i, I didn't want that I, I didn't ask for any carvings but i've collected rocks and minerals and different specimen for since i was a little kid and so, I mean, I always told him if there's anything cool, grab me it, you know, and so he brings back these carvings and at the time it was just, you know, a few little pieces like this. And this is actually the very first piece I got and uh, I couldn't believe it. I was like, man, someone's doing a pretty good job, you know, like this isn't just some quick Dremel job. There's love invested into this and, and then uh, he told me how much and I was like, no, that's pretty, pretty inexpensive and yeah. It's uh, it's developed to this now. I, I still haven't answered my questions. <laughs> That's what I thought too, Brian. But yeah, show me some proof on uh, on that statement because I can't find it. Uh, Linda, how I, I don't think she got caught lying. I think she's a uh, really a, a pretty awesome person. It's a questionable topic that is really hard to dissect, especially from an investigative journalist standpoint. So. Um, doing it with care and, and caution is really, really important. And, um, you can't just uh, come out there and say that this stuff is, is real without serious recourse because the scientific community doesn't believe it. I didn't believe it, but at some point someone came up with one heck of a story here uh, that correlates with multiple different cultures and religions and kind of ties everything together in a logical perception. So it's something that I've looked for in terms of truth via religion and stuff for a long time. And this is one of the few times that it's actually added up to the point where I can say that that might actually make sense. So I don't know. It's, it's interesting. The finite detail, you know, someone making fakes and stuff that would they go through the detail to make the inside of that look so aged? And would they go through the detail of carving some other type of stone into this tongue to put it on? I mean, it's just so many little things um, that, that just doesn't make a lot of sense to make a pipe like this. Uh, 
you know, it's it's not easy to get all that to fit together. Yeah, there's a lot of frauds out there. I, I mean, everybody's got reasons for, for their actions a lot of times. And sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. It's not for me to judge. Uh, but she's always been really nice to me. Hard to get a hold of, but really nice. <laughs> Let's see if, if you can see the amethyst is pretty. Yeah, it is a one of a kind. In fact, I've looked and looked and looked and looked for duplicates of some degree. In fact, there's these little tiny rice figures that... I was sure of that I would find a duplicate and I have over 500 of them and every one of them are unique. So it's really, really tough to, uh, to say why someone would go through such, uh, effort for such a little reward. I mean, the, the guys down there aren't, um, charging millions of dollars for these things by any means. It's, you know, I know what it costs to go to Vietnam and get a, a crystal carved and it's still not, uh, not cheap to use lapidary equipment, you know, the artistic value here is, is extremely high. And as far as have I contacted archaeologists or universities? Yes, yes. And so many times, yes. Uh, it's been an absolute brick wall experience for the most part, but I do have actual um, labs right now. They're doing DNA and uh, SEM and uh, age testing on some of our bones and, uh, Pretty, uh, pretty stoked. Yeah, Brian, I'm glad you got some laugh out of it. You're still laughing about that, bro. I don't hear you laughing now. Because <laughs> I stopped laughing when I saw one of these. It's a... Uh, Pretty impeccable the difference between these schools too. I've got like seven of them now and definitely not of any mammal I've ever seen. So that's where the research is at right now. I was just trying to determine the bones and the, the age of those and there's roots going through them. So we'll be able to age the roots too, which is really great. And, and, uh, yeah, at least compiled data. Yeah. It I, I, I'm trying to find out if it's real or not. I mean, if someone went through this much hassle, this much gluing and, and story writing and going into ancient cultures and diving so deep, it's um, really hard to believe that someone would go through that for a, a simple hoax. You know, there's definitely more than one man's work here. Um, and they, they do sell them in markets down there, tourist items. You're, you're totally right. However, um, the reason that they get away with it and the reason that they're being sold at these markets is because the government is denying their authenticity. And so anything with a UFO or an alien on it is deemed non antiquity. And so you can buy and sell and, uh, no, no problems. Right. So they go out there and they'll dig this stuff up and they can go sell it on the market legally. So it's a free cash crop for them. And I've put them through a lot of testing. I've offered them crazy amounts of money, trying to get the truth, trying to get certain things, custom pieces, you name it. I can't get them to slip up. And this is dealing with more than 30 different people. So um, I've really tried to buy from a ton of different guys to, to see if there was, you know, folds in the story or whatever. And there's not that I found. So I hope someone takes the passion and, and finds it if there is. It's absolutely sickening if it is fake, but it's even more sickening if it's real. So either way, I have a real passion to try to find out the answer because one way or another, either people are pulling a fast one or people are pulling a fast one. So it's extremely important that the truth is found out 
and uh, it's really hard to get anybody accredited to to take the truth seriously um, if this is it, you know. <laughs> Um, I've acquired them from working with people down in Mexico who are digging them up. Some of the guys, they work for uh, gas lines or buildings. There's a new train being built. There's, there's quite a bit of digging going on. Um, and those people find it. Uh, the, there's Gen 6 Productions who are doing a documentary on this. They've done start to finish uh, documentation of the entire process, digging the holes, the 20-foot holes, using GPR, geo-radar, different sorts of uh, ways to um, find these pieces in the ground. A lot of them aren't extremely deep. They're you know, 20 to 30 centimeters on average. And uh, so it's, yeah, oh yeah, pine cones for sure. I don't have any pine cones from a Huelos though, unfortunately. Never seen one. Um, quite rare, but I do have, I have this one handy here. Yeah, Masonic stuff I've seen on quite a few of these, which is really uh, strange mechanical items yeah there's there's like um weird sundials and different um like i, I have no real explanation of, of how to claim what it is it's like this piece here you know i i don't know what to call that is it mechanical is it uh <laughs> I, it's weird you know a lot of ritual type stuff uh, stuff that i don't fully understand no question Yeah, actually, I have a lab working on one of the, the skulls right now. Yeah, both the snakes are pipes. But we should have some conclusive data, carbon-14, SEM, and uh, <clears throat> and we have so many specimens of the skull that we're going to be able to cross-compare the ages and the data and, and really get a, a confident result rather than just, you know, one specimen trying to provide all this data. We're going to have a lot of different ones, and the condition that they're in is is varying some are petrified some are more fresh seeming some look older newer etc um i'd say the most bizarre things are these these skulls for sure um, as far as creepy because i punched into ai you know what would i look like if i was alive with a picture of one of these skulls and uh yeah it, it looked just like some of the carvings which was crazy I haven't tested anything with conscience other than my own and, and uh, I guess so. Yes, maybe I, <laughs> that's kind of a complicated question. It just depends on what level of conscience you're talking about, I guess. Yeah. You know, there is, there is actually, I'll show you there's vertebrae and a piece of spine here. Um, it comes down off of this. However, there's an absolute cranial cavity. Uh, there's suture lines. Um, the way it goes together is very strange. A little whistle here, and this thing's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, um, I, I heard a story from a buddy that fell asleep with one of the um, pieces in his hand. And he had a, you know, DMT type experience where he left his body and, and weird things occurred. I mean, kind of seemed like it was a dream, but it, it, it was unlike any dream he'd ever had. And so it's, uh, it's interesting. I haven't ever had any um, crazy experiences that I can know other than feeling really um, off. Uh, they, like being in here right now is actually like I just moved all these pieces in here so I can start doing the podcast and trying to answer questions about some of this. And 
maybe incentivize people to ask questions themselves and figure it out because I'm just one guy and I really want to know. <laughs> it's hard for me though. I'm not a doctorate or a PhD. So really um, need as many of those type of people as possible. I finally have one that's that's on board with at least doing the testing and sampling. So that's really exciting. It took me about two years to find a, a PhD scientist that would be a captivated enough to, to put his name on the line and, and, and test this stuff. Yeah, common themes are fallen angels, aliens, DNA manipulation, um, creator, uh, gods of other civilizations like Enki and Ra, um, and many others, Ganesh, Anubis, Horus, Osiris, Isis, Sin. Quite a few, uh, even some of the more rare Egyptian um, pantheon uh, type people have seen mermaid type tails, fish suits like the, the Dogen and uh, different cultures. Uh, um, Anunnaki, I believe, uh, Enki also went in a fish suit on some depictions from Samaria. Th these are all from uh, Tula Hildago over here. I'm only supposed to be talking about a whale, so I'll go back over here. I I get sidetracked by the Tula stuff hard. <laughs> no, I didn't steal them. They're all totally legal to purchase because the government says they're not antiquities. So they said because of aliens and UFOs that they absolutely have to be modern because those type of things weren't worshipped uh, by the Mayan or the Incas in known Mesoamerica uh, history. So it has to be modern is what the, you know, the Department of Archaeology and Anthropology said in a letter 2017. So that's why you'll see a lot of these on the market. It's hard to believe because if they were real antiquities, there would be no way people would just be selling these on eBay, right? It, it just doesn't make sense. But uh, sadly, that's what's happening. And uh, we've actually found traces that the, the archaeology and anthropology department are actually releasing some of these pieces to people uh, to sell on the market, as well as there's people being paid to make fake pieces that we found. Uh, some of them have glass and, and other parts on there. And uh, so we, we think there might be some sort of, you know, they're trying to cover up this with fake ones as well, so they can call it all fake. Um, Mayan pieces, you know, I've seen a couple Mayan symbols. I'm trying to think which piece had that. Oh, I know here. We've got this, this statue over here, I think, that has some Mayan type glyphs on it. It's also got an electrical symbol. Some of the symbols are really interesting to, to study. I'm going to move this out of the way. This thing weighs about 75 pounds. It's a banded calcite. Figures that the Mayan glyphs are on the other side. <laughs> yeah, a couple of the pipes have some residue, uh, but it's, it's also dirt and stuff because they were buried, so it's really hard to differentiate the... Uh, you know, resins, plus if it is that old, like any sort of resins, it's going to definitely be, it's going to be present, but it's it's going to have to be scraped and tested. I, I haven't touched any of those um, for that purpose. And, you know, the one, one of the masks I got from a guy down there and he's like, oh yeah, we blessed it for you when, when he sent it. I was like, oh, thank you, man. You know, and, and I didn't understand what he, what he'd said, but he had smoked cannabis out of it. <laughs> before he sent it. So when I got the box from Mexico, the thing smelled like reefer. And uh, I'm just like, holy cow, I can't believe you sent that in the mail. Yeah, you know, they, they, they had a, it's not dyed with anything specifically you can see on this. Um, they had a technique of, of packing a fine, fine dirt or some sort of mixture of dirt and something else into the carvings. So they, they made them so that, that you could see the, the carvings. And so they packed them in there. And I mean, it's really quite amazing how they got it to stick like that.
Yeah, soot or something like that. It doesn't it doesn't smell like soot, but Uh, Mexico, North America, I should say. <laughs> yeah, these pipes are pretty crazy. The fact that this mouth is open, but it's not cut in the front, is a serious process <laughs> that I, I, I just can't think as a stonemason, like how they would go about chipping that out of there very easily. No, it's not ink based for sure. It's uh, it's just dirt that's in there. No, this is stone. Yeah. It is fascinating. I, I, even if this was modern and I saw a gallery of this, I mean, I've gone to quite a few glass galleries and stuff where people get kind of, you know, symbolic and things and I, I enjoy it. So yeah, the, the maps and calendars, we, we have multiple astrolabes, uh, which is like the earliest form of, of uh, charting the sky. So we hope to have a supercomputer look at that very soon and, and be able to see how old it is based off the, the, the stars and constellations because the constellations are all pretty consistent and they're actually consistent with the Sumerian ones that they just decoded. So Now th this pipe is stone. We do have quite a few bone pieces though. A lot of sarcophagus. Yeah, age-wise, carbon dates, they've tested, like, you know, the the, the glue, essentially. The, this is a glue, this red line here. So they, they fused these multiple pieces of stone together with this glue. The glue has organic material in it, so they've carbon tested that about 50 times. And, uh, and the date range is consistently hit between 8 and 21,000 years ago. Um... That's just glue. They've also got ceramic pieces, and they've drilled core samples to find out the last time they were baked, and the date ranges were consistent. A damaged piece? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if I had one. I think this piece broke at one point. Yeah, right, right here. The, the glue is so fragile it turns to dust, so in shipping, um, you can see it's, it's where the glue was. It's completely just turned to dust, and it leaves a crack there. Yeah, oh, it's definitely a, a similar Freemason symbol. Compass in the uh, square type situation. Pyramid, the eye, all of it really. Um, you know, they're a secret society. I don't know much about them uh, in terms of, you know, from anyone on the inside or anything like that. But I've done a lot of research about their symbolism. And it's quite interesting where they derived it from and, you know where a lot of this stuff comes from. You take like Aleister Crawley's work or, you know, you go back to the French of what they, they took in the wars and, and uh, that knowledge of black arts and magic. It, it all came from somewhere, obviously. Like, I don't think we just came up with this idea of black magic uh, in our dreams or maybe, maybe it is, but somehow that's been given to us. You know, it's a lot of technical knowledge. You look at like uh, King Solomon's work and stuff like that. It's, uh, very symbolic, I guess, is where I'm going with that. You want to see a strange tablet here, I'll show you. Definitely one of my favorites right here. Sorry for the weird camera angle, it's in my case right now. So. But this kind of says the theme. On the other side of it is six discs. And the, th the thought is, I'll try to turn it over here. I'll just, uh, yeah, 
always stuff dropping. That's the you got to be so careful with this stuff. It's really a pain. I, I hate even working with it because it's like I don't want to be the one to break it or drop things. It's just so fragile. Yeah, it all looked fake to me, man. I, I thought it for sure. I bet my friend that went down to the gem show and brought this stuff back. I, I told him that I could prove it, that it was it was fake for sure. There was no way this was real. This was going to be on the news, and this would be widely talked about. Like, they're not just going to. But at the same point, you follow history, and you look at some of the things like the Grand Canyon and um, the cover up there with the Smithsonian and stuff. It's... <laughs> Yeah, you know, you look, it's just the same with Area 51 and, and the UFO shit. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it, it's now being disclosed by our government, even though for years people were uh, made to felt stupid or, or, you know, hey, that's fake. No way, you know. And so it's, uh, it's our evolution, I guess, is figuring it out. And it's, it's hard to believe change and, and to accept the things that we don't fully understand. Yeah, we sell a few of them. It is awfully detailed. I, uh, I just like these teeth. You know, this is a, that's a whole other stone that's cut and shaped and carved, and then inlaid into the bigger piece of stone. And that's not something I often see on on fake pieces, uh, at least from China and Vietnam, Malaysia, stuff like that, where I've gotten. You know, I've, I, I've collected stone carvings and stuff, so I, I love, you know, even if it is modern, if it's got artistic value, it's something that I enjoy putting in my curio cabinet. You know, that's where I was kind of justifying the research on this stuff is, you know, even if I do prove it to be legitimate, I still really enjoy having a few pieces of it because it's, it's beautiful art to look at. The energy on it is unlike anything I've ever been around, so it's just, it's interesting. Like, like like that little uh, red piece there, you know, that's a whole other stone that's been cut and glued into the head of that thing. Same with that piece and with that piece. All serrated. flip this thing around it's pretty neat the other side of it it's like it was uh, I don't even know the style of, of art you could call this but it's been like hit with a, a point or something or maybe it's just the natural stone that was like this I don't know it's it's an interesting pitting at the minimum What type of animal bones? I, I don't know. I, uh, I'm not a bone expert, so I'm not going to say what they are. I do know that I've asked quite a few people what the heck that is, and um, you know, the the best answer I got was it looks like the one that they found in the Rodopi Mountains of Bulgaria in 2001. And so I went and researched the the Roa Dope or the Rodopi um, school, and I found that there was a lot of scientists that researched the school that looked I, almost identical to this back in 2001. They documented it. They had a lot of people look at it. They had no clue what it was exactly. Um, so they sent it off for DNA testing and uh, it went missing. And 20 years later, somehow I ended up with this shit in my house. So <laughs> we're trying to figure it out. I, uh, I, I, don't even, you know, my wife, she looks at me side-eyed sometimes, like, what what the hell is this stuff, you know? But like I said earlier, so, someone is betraying someone <laughs> somewhere, whether it's the governments or the, the story, the religion. Somewhere the stories got mixed up, I think, or, or there's a lot more knowledge for us to understand because, A, you go down to, like, Cuzco, South America and look at the walls 
and how they were built on the side of mountains big stone cut ones it's just uh it's insane whale vertebrae i haven't heard that one before i uh don't believe so however aquatic is definitely possible a lot of these uh, carvings depict a squid faced being and uh, we think that it's it's possibly one of those we, we put it into ai and asked what it would uh, look like if it was alive and it came back with it looked just like a Cthulhu type being it was quite crazy but on the, a lot of these pieces you'll see these squid faces and the, you know the different holes and like weird resting areas or something for appendages it's 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 possible This is an interesting piece. Subscribing, I don't know, probably just lets you know when I go live or something like that. I haven't played around too much with TikTok Live and my buddy's like, you should you should do this. So here I am. <laughs> Where are the eyes? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing here and here. I have no idea. It could be a whale vertebrae. I, I really don't know, but I've asked quite a few uh, people who are bone experts, and they, they didn't have a, a solution. So, or a, not a solution, but a, an answer, I guess. Yeah, yeah, their DNA and stuff too, the, the octopus, and uh, it's definitely an interesting coincidence at the minimum. Um, the fact they can shape shift and do crazy things is definitely uh, something to note. <laughs> this this dates, if, if the carbon dates and the thermal luminescent testing is accurate, this dates 5,000 years before the Mayan. So it's older than the Olmec, it's older than all of that. And, you know, you, you, yeah, I have uh, six, six or seven skulls now. So they, uh, I found one about two years ago, got it. And then I asked all the families that I work with down there, if they'd seen anything like it, please let me know. And about six weeks ago, they found quite a few of them. They found like a burial area that, uh, that, that yielded quite a few. And I, I got a good chunk of them. So I'm really, really stoked because it's going to give us a, a lot more, compelling research yeah yeah the dna facts is is definitely uh i mean you know i was doing some uh, research to see um and, and they, they show like two hundred thousand years ago our, our chromosomes mutated and the odds of of it mutating in the way that it did to create our intelligence uh, was like such a ridiculous number that um, it was deemed impossible so you know the, the fact that a lot of these show manipulation and stuff like that i i wouldn't doubt it you know yeah i've uh, seen quite a few of the rock carvings as well and um there's definitely stuff out there on the landscape that, that, that looks similar to this, especially like this type of, of uh, character here. Uh, not, not necessarily with the wings, but the, the shape of the head and the eyes. Um, I've seen on multiple uh, petroglyphs out there. <clears throat> yeah, the, the, I agree 100%, Adam. Like the, the chances of all this happening, there's definitely a purpose or a reason that someone put into motion to... Uh, to, to do all this because it's a it's a beautiful thing <laughs> so many little things going on to, to support each other and you know it's like we're all here to really help each other and <laughs> well uh, i mean I, i'd like to see uh i'd like to see some modern artisans carve some of this stuff to be honest with you i mean I haven't really seen work like this done, you know, specifically like on this piece. 
this is adventuring it's pretty hard stone but the the carving that's on this is like you can't even feel the groove it's literally um like part of the surface Yeah, I mean, how do you even just make a, some of these shapes and, and, I mean, to get a cup, I mean, this is a cup underneath it here, you know, this pulls out, it's like a 50 pound pine cone that sits on top of these things and they're both gigantic chalices, and probably uh, close to 200 pounds for both. Yeah, it is a, a Zeno, you know, I, I <laughs> when I saw the, the first one I saw was, was a large huge thing and it, just couldn't believe it i found it on the back of this piece back of that piece and a couple few other pieces it's interesting i couldn't it's just hard to believe that science fiction it has a possibility of being real or something like that i i don't know they're from um from mexico these pieces here are from tula hildalgo Yep, Baghdad batteries, absolutely. I've got a Jed pillar, and uh, it's probably the most energetic piece that I have. I'll, uh, I'll bust it out of the safe here one of these times and show it. I don't really ever take it out of the safe because it's like really fragile, and I, I just don't want to really risk it. It's the only Jed pillar that I've ever seen. This is a bracelet. Yeah, I've had a lot of the gold tested with XRF. And, you know, one thing that's unique, none of it's 24 karat, which if you do any gold leafing, you go on to buy stuff, that's usually what you're going to find. Um, this stuff all is, is unrefined. There's silver and I've even found rhodium, platinum. All kinds of stuff. The rhodium platinum ring that I have is really, uh, I, I, I mean, it, rhodium's so expensive that it just seems like if if someone was gonna do some sort of mining that they would take that out, you know. <laughs> and they do rhodium coating on certain metals, but in this case, um, I don't believe that to be the case. It's too high of a percentage. It's not just a coating. This piece is really unique, this pyramid. I'm gonna lift it straight up. There's a, a piece that goes into it. I'm gonna set it down here. It's like, why on earth would you not only, I'll see if I can get some light in here. But to put this thing in the bottom of this, you know, it's just, and then it's, it's carved up inside of there, with DNA symbols all the way up in there. And it's got a key right here. And this stone has a, a lip on it with this hole. And you put the key in there. somewhere you can see the nub down there and uh, it, it'll lock it into place inside of there and you can literally hold the thing and it won't fall out I don't try to do it too often but I have a video of it that I did once just to, to prove it and yeah the fact they got that little lip on there and, and made that like that is <laughs> a lot of extra effort for sure yeah, smoking pipe. Quite a few pipes. There's depictions of them using it also. Um, 
no pot leaves or anything like that that I've seen depicted, but they were smoking something out of there, it looks like. Who knows what? Uh, the pot is pretty old, so I know there was Greek scholars in 3400 BC that went down to uh, uh, Africa to the Dogon people and found a, a festival occurring that celebrated the elliptical orbit of their planet, which was the Sirius B. And this was back 3400 BC and all the way up until 19, I think it was 93, people thought the Dogon people were smoking the pipe literally and, and that that couldn't be true. But the, the Hubble telescope actually proved that there was a dwarf star that they explained. And so then they looked at the elliptical orbit of it and it matched the dates in which they celebrate this festival. So it's uh, <laughs> the fact they had advanced astro, astro knowledge like that. Um, in 3400 BC in smoking paw, they said they, that it was brought here. It's a pretty alien plant. It's kind of like the octopus again, you know, we have a, a very strange plant that has a lot of healing properties and other things too. It absorbs radiation. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things it does um, pretty uniquely. So yeah, we've had quite a few people look, you know, a lot of people don't want to touch it. Um, it's pretty dicey topic. I think only in recent years with this disclosure or talk of disclosure or something that maybe we're getting uh, closer to the point because I, I thought for sure I'd be hearing knocking or something like that. I, I really didn't want to you know, stoke the hornet's nest too hard, but at the same point, I, I wanted answers. I talked to customs. Customs said it was okay, so I was going off of that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, endocannabinoid receptors found on... Uh, on quite a few things on the planet. Yeah. 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 The statues there, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, um, we found a, a statue like this of an astronaut that had that same tool or weapon in his hand. Um, and uh yeah it's it's interesting yeah a lot of pieces here and and you know we we've worked we've created a whole network you know my good friend geo aliens uh, make sure to follow him he's knee deep in this stuff and, and we're working together as well as uh quite a few other people to try to do this privately and understand it because mainstream media and and stuff like that they don't want to touch it for whatever purposes they may know something i don't i wish i knew the tiger's eye piece. Oh, I have a block of tiger's eye in there. What are you talking about? About this here. I just put the tablet on top of it. Like I say, I collected rocks and minerals uh, before, so I have quite a few different specimens. And oh, this this is one of my favorite pieces here. I'll show you this in the light. This little ball. I mean that the effort to make this into a perfect sphere like that. That's a mosaic of many different stones, but to, to do that is pretty cool. <laughs> and it's a pendant also, you can sport this thing. $12 for all of it, man. If you weren't a normal farmer, I would say no, but man, respect. So yeah, it, it's all yours, man. <laughs> you got to come get it though. This piece behind this head here, I'll take the head out so I can show it properly. It's a sphere also that's really large. It has a guy inside like a Russian doll. And um, so I got the ball first. The guy gave me a good deal on it. He's like, yeah, cheap, you know. And so I, I bought it. And like three or four months later, the guy messages me and he's like, hey, I found the base. I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, I found the base for your ball. And 
all of a sudden they, they were digging in the same area and, and found this. And I mean, it fits the ball perfect. I've got other spheres. They don't fit in there. So it's like someone had to have made this to hold that thing. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. No, they, they definitely... There's a there's a market for it. I try to just hang on to them because yeah, just reading some comments here. Uh, the symbols are really dicey. You know, there's there's some where it's like a Sumerian type where you can try to kind of translate it and then you've got stuff like this where it's uh it doesn't repeat itself there's no vowels there's no typical language things um so no there and there's so many of these symbols it's maddening i mean like like tens of thousands of these symbols um and they're all really unique and, and uniform and they have like real specific structure to them you know, there's a line under a line under a lot of them, and then some of them don't have it. Some of them are like um, four axis, and the other ones are two type situation. I don't know. It's an unknown language. I mean, the the, the one on the back of this guy is what seems to be a, a an early form of cuneiform or something, but it doesn't translate to. Um, any of the cuneiform forms that I was able to uh, ask, I, I talked to a couple experts over in Europe um, that studied the language, and they weren't able to translate it. Yeah, you know, Oak Island, Skinwalker Ranch, I mean, I'm very fascinated with these places. I think there's probably some truth to it. I just really don't like the production company and the way that they're, like, stringing us along. It's... Uh, it's something that feels like it's taken forever. And, and like, if I was doing the research, I feel like, I don't know. I mean, it, it just seems like it's a, a, a drip feed, you know? But yeah, and I found that uh, symbol on Tula pieces as well. So it's definitely, definitely something. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully more people people will start to research this. You know, Nassim Harriman, Greg Braden, uh, Klaus Dona, uh, Scott Woltar. There, there are people out there who are doing research on this publicly. Uh, 2019, Scott Woltar did an episode of America on Earth um, on the Abuelos pieces. He carbon dated piece a piece actually almost. I mean, if you watch the episode, it looked almost identical to this, and he did a carbon sample on it. I think it was like uh, 10,000 or 8,000 years old. So it's it's something people are doing, but yeah, that place is cursed. It, it's uh, it, But it's interesting, though, because, you know, curses, black magic, all these things, hex, voodoo, witchcraft, the witch hunts that occurred here and in Europe, th there's a pattern here. Um, it's, it's like, what, you know, wh where did that stuff come from? And that's kind of a, a common pattern. And if you look in like the Bible and, and stuff of, of uh, you know, Satan and, and the whole story of the fallen angels, etc., it's, it's uh, kind of freaky. This piece is really unique because it's got a, a strange thing. I, I, I put this in the, the gem collector's book to see, you know, what this was. I'd never seen this type of patterning. It looked kind of like Malachite, but the, the patterning was really weird. I posted it in the gem group and everybody was like, that's fake. It's got to be resin. That's not a real gem, etc." cetera. Um, and I, I did testing on these uh, with hot, hot points, you know, to see if there was smoke, scratch tests, etc. cetera. And, uh, and then also microscopes and seeing the inclusions in it. And it's, it's absolutely not glass or resin. So it's pretty interesting. The living stone. I've heard that statement before, but I, I'm not 100% sure what you're talking about for sure. 
it's all from Mexico, either uh, a Huelos de Alisco for like this stuff here, the mosaics, and this style of art, and then the stuff over here is all from Tula Hidalgo. Definitely a different style of art, no question there. Everything is really big, and the, the weird thing is, though, is the patterns of seeing Saturn and fallen angels and the Ankh, uh, Egyptian and, and uh, Sumerian deities, the Freemason stuff. Uh, it's all it's all duplicated on, on both. So it's like if this was fake, then you had to have these two states who are eight hours apart. They would have had to have corroborated all this story. And, and okay, we're going to make pieces that go along with this story. And, and, and the fact that it all goes along so well is uh, that's part of the part that compels me because um, that's not an easy thing to get. You know, loose lips sink ships. And there's a there's an army of people who like to talk out there, especially when money's involved and you're down in Mexico. And when I throw 10 or 20 grand on the table and I can't get any sort of, you know, nothing to come out of these guys, it's like, are you kidding me? You know, <laughs> I really thought I got you, but it's, it's near impossible. I've pretty much given up on that mindset because I, I, I mean, I, I met a lot of really good friends down there, and I don't want to insult their their honesty at this point. You know, like I uh, I've seen what I need to see, and and uh, now I'm just trying to share it and research it and document it because, um, yeah, that's if if people find out fifty or a hundred years from now that this stuff is real, and uh, <laughs> you know and it's all in private collections and been swept under the rug, then we're not going to have a lot of the story. And, and so hopefully this will help preserve some of the story. And no, I don't have anything that makes anything boil. I've seen those videos and nothing cool like that. I, I didn't want to put my pine cones in water. I don't really want to mess with it. The, you know, I want to keep everything as intact as possible just for research, but I, I did have to try it on one and I got nothing. <laughs> Yeah, Planet Nibiru is interesting. They're, they're definitely the Anunnaki. I, I'm, I'm fairly confident is, is on many of these pieces. But, um, you know, what their story is exactly and where that goes. Uh, you know, the story is maybe that um, the fallen angels were here to deceive man and, and made man believe that they were God. And they, you know, used DNA manipulation and created all these uh, beings, etc. Um, then... Maybe this is all deceit, you know, and, and these stones were made to worship these gods, uh, but they're gods with a lowercase g, and they're not the god, and, and I think that might be why the whole flood happened and, and all these things. If that all did occur, um, then that would make sense. The fall of Babel, that story, um, I, I found a piece from Tula that, that, that is exactly as the, the, the Tower of Babel was described in text, and uh, I found that to be really interesting to see in Mexico. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to call it a day. Oh, yeah, I'll show the skull one more time for sure. We hit our goal, so I really appreciate it. I, I set a goal just to see, and you guys are awesome. So. Yeah, there are crop circle ones, um, especially on these green statues. I, I'll, uh, I don't know if I have them down here. I'm going to do a, a, another a live on just the green statues. I'm going to bring them and, and set them all up on this table. And I'm just going to kind of rotate pieces through and try to show them. And that way I don't break anything and can, um, you know, try to show everything over the next few weeks. And we're going to launch our, our, uh, podcast here on March 15th, me and geo aliens. And so we're going to bring on the people from Mexico. We're going to bring on different researchers. Uh, you know, we're going to interview all kinds of different people and try to try to answer these questions and get to the bottom of it because there's a lot of people with a lot of stories and uh, down there in Mexico, the UFO spottings and the type of uh, extraterrestrial activity is, is really, really extreme. And, and that's where a lot of these tic-tac and UAP 
um, things come from uh, in terms of the military as well. So it's definitely something of, of interest. And uh, yeah. All right, till next time. Thanks, guys.